Okay, my name is Randolph Tepps. I work in several positions. I work in the IT section as a network person. Then I work as a help desk supervisor. And then I work in the archives as a, a data base administrator. And then, yeah, basically that. So kind of all, all over. Yeah. Where, um, when did you start with the ICTR? Uh, 1996. 1996, you started with the ICTR. The ICTR yeah. Before then, I worked with peacekeeping in Rwanda, when the genocide took place. And then I worked with human rights. And who, with the monitors, you know, there were like 100 monitors who went after the investigation of the, the preliminary investigation, the genocide, all the cases in terms of what, commit, what, what took place, who commit what, you know, and sexual uh, abuse and all, all of that. So I was a support person for the the 100 monitors the human rights monitors in the field and i was responsible for the email system so when they come up from the field we have to send it to geneva so i used to send the records to geneva for them and then also i used to fix the computers when they crash <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's always, that was always like the yeah, case when it, yeah, yeah, there are a lot of problems. Working. But yeah. so, so when, when were you in Rwanda again? 1995. 1995, you yeah. were in Rwanda, so shortly after. I yeah, I went uh, July 1995. It was the genocide was 1994, mm -hmm. and I went there like a, almost a year after, like eight months, nine months after. Like. And, but that was not with the ICTR? That no, was. with the human, with, with the international. It was a peacekeeping mission, uh, uh, United Nations peacekeeping mission. The ones that went in to try to stop the fighting, but they were not successful. And then it escalated, and the president was killed, and then a lot of killings started taking place. And then after it subsided, I went in to support the, 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 the military in the field, especially with their computers and things like that, and keeping communication between the headquarters and the field. And also, I work in help desk, you know, with, with, with fixing computers. You know, because I'm, I'm a network hardware and database person. And tell me the story of these these records. Like, as a, like, what were the records that were being created in Rwanda on the ground? And then okay. they were. I just, I just remember, like, one of the first times I, I met you, you told me the story of how. Yeah. Okay. All the, your the, life, you've been traveling. Yeah, I've been traveling. Yeah. Like I said, I traveled behind the record because when I came in. The genocide had taken place, so what was being done by the peacekeepers were basically trying to maintain law and order and to maintain some form of stability. But at the same time, the UN started gathering information about what took place. So human rights came in after that. And human rights were sent in the field to basically investigate and find out what actually took place in the various provinces and the different part of the country with the people one-on-one. -on -one. And then I moved to human rights because they told the, the UN to close down. <laughs> and then I moved to human rights and I was human rights. That's the time we really got a lot of information, uh, tons and tons of information. It got to a point where they told us to to leave because we were getting information that, that were implicating the government. And because when you go in for information, you don't know what people are going to say, but and then they told us to leave because they said that we did not come to investigate them, we came to investigate the atrocity that was committed. And then ICT, I got recruited by ICT just before, and they closed down and they gave them 48 hours to leave, and I was already with ICT. So they told them that they could not take their computers out. So being that I was with ICT, I was working in the network section, they came to ICT and we had to send it. <laughs> through, you know, the email to Geneva for them. But uh, I worked closely with the, like the initial gathering of the information and then the transfer of the information and then they supply the information to the courts because I worked with the investigation unit after that in, in the IC, in, in Kigali because Kigali had the investigation unit and Arusha had the courts. So I worked with the investigation unit and my job was to work with these guys who are going out in the field, the tracking teams and the rest of the other teams, to make sure that the database are working. I even helped to design a database that they are using now 
they call the the sexual harassment and and things like that. So I work with them to design the database initially, and I work with them. I I I didn't gather the information. I was mostly like a support person all the time, and making sure that the records were available and secure. And then I was transferred to Arusha after working in Kigali for nine years. I was transferred to Arusha, and then I worked with the IT section in the help desk support. And I was a supervisor, and later on I became, so I started working with the network, and then I became a focal point where everything had to pass through me, you know, in terms of, because uh, maybe institutional knowledge, you know, the, what I the experience and thing. And then I got tired working in IT, and I moved to archives in 2007. And when I started working the the IT, I mean the archives, we started dealing with the actual records, you know, making it available in the court, in the court trim, the trim database, making sure that uh, and the various parties receive copies of their records, I mean the records, so that at least they can be able to you know, prepare for their, their court hearings and things like that. And my job was basically securing the the judicial database, which is being used now, you know, in mass. Because when I finally transferred to mass 2014, that database was transferred to us because I was a dream administrator in ICTR. So uh, basically, I've been following the records, or, or the records have been following me. <laughs> and what, what, like, what, what is the importance of these records? Well, well the, the records, one thing I've come to realize, uh, this ICTR really has set a good standard in terms of making sure that crimes uh, against humanity are discouraged. Because there are a lot of crimes that are being committed. Even before I joined the UN, I was in Liberia, and Charles Taylor took over in my country. And they killed up a lot of people. I was a refugee. I was carrying my bag. And I saw people being killed before my very eyes. And there was no concern about human rights, you know. And I was in line, and they pulled somebody off the line and cut the neck off. I, I saw it, you know. And I said, gosh, there's nobody to to protect the, the ordinary civilians, you know. So when the International Criminal Court was established, and first the, 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 the peacekeeper, peacekeeping force to try to put a stop to it, I was excited as I want to be a part of it because I want to support something that will go down, that will improve, you know, human rights throughout the world. So when I joined, I saw it being done, especially when the courts started. And I saw those who are in position of authority in Africa, they are never, never investigated when they commit atrocity. For the first time, they were sitting in the defense and seat and answering to questions, and they were found guilty. Then it, I know that throughout Africa, this will, you know, resonate, and people will start being conscious of the fact that no crime can go unpunished. You know, and it has minimized the, because now most of these things that are being done by terrorists, it's not like a government, it's being done by a bunch of people who are lunatics. But in the past, it was being done by institution of governments, you know, where they go out and they kill up people at night and everybody lock up in the house, you're afraid to come out to even say anything. And I saw it happen, you know. So for once, the International Criminal Tribunal was set up to put a stop to something like, or to minimize it to a large extent. You know, and I'm proud to be a part of it because I work with it like 20 years now, and I've seen what took place from the beginning until now. And the success story is that many of these guys are behind bars, and many of them are discouraged to come to to, to even think about doing it. You can see some people are still doing it, but they know that they have in the back of their mind that they will be investigated one day. So this is a deterrent. I, I believe it's a deterrent. It's going to help international uh, human rights, you know, throughout the world. Is there, I mean, as someone who, who who started out clearly like as a a, a refugee and making this long <laughs> trip yeah. here, is there was there any moments during your time with the ICTR that stand out to you as as being something that's like this is this is why I'm here? Or I'm, 
like this is this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Like, like when you reflect back on the ICTR, what what what, what stands out? Okay, uh, there, there, there are a lot of things that that stood out for me because like most of the the, the trials that went on, when there's a verdict, you know, when there's a verdict, and the person who's being charged and found guilty is someone I know if it was in ordinary circumstance would never have been uh, 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 found guilty. He, then he encouraged me to say, yes, we are here for a worthy cause because we see that it's not only, the process sometimes can be a little bit complicated and long because international criminal and justice is a little bit different from like the Kachacha court or other courts, you know, where you have this uh, and, and justice that is not really transparent, you know. But I see that it takes a lot of effort, a lot of resources, a lot of manpower to carry out these uh, investigations and carry out these court proceedings. But in the end, the outcome is just and transparent. And every man is given a chance in court, even the, even the, the one who's found guilty. So it stands out to me because I was not accustomed to it. Because I came from a background where things happen and you keep on going to court and nothing really come out of it because the guy who has the, the, the most money and the guy with the largest purse, you know, always win, you know, or the, or the case that's prolonged forever, you know. But for once, I see that irrespective of their position or their title, justice is being done. It's seen to be done, you know. And they are given a fair chance, you know. That's some of the things that st stood out to me because I was not too familiar with it where I came from, but now I see it happening, you know. Yeah. Um, what, one of the things I'm, I'm curious about is in the time that you've been running a lot of the technical systems here, the, there's yeah, the database there's, and things. There's, there's an incredible amount of change in the technology, mm -hmm. just uh, that you have access to. Yeah, um, and also. Um, there's a number of like really distinct challenges that you have when you're working here compared to what but, I, I can imagine that like yeah. having conversations with New York, yeah, yeah. where there's not power outages, where there's not mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. certain kinds of like yeah. like you're, you you've been tasked with a very specific set of uh, yes. challenges yeah. to create systems that 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 work here. Um, okay. How 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 has that been for you? Is, is that a, a challenging? It was a it was a challenge and also it was a it was an opportunity for me to advance in terms of when I came first we were dealing with things like access you know this, and spreadsheet and things like that and then we moved from there to a proper record management system like Trim Xilab because even Xilab I work with the initial you know uh, uh, people who came to set up Xilab. You know, they had a team that came from America. They came from the State Department. They were part of the tracking team. And I worked closely with them because they, they came in for a short time, but they came in and to make sure that some proper system was being placed, put into place. And since I was an IT person, I worked closely with them. And then I saw us moving from these regular desktop uh, standalone system to a network system and and then we move into our electronic record management system which is stream and then xylab came in for the investigation unit for uh, gathering information in terms of the witnesses in terms of connections in terms of the area and all of that and other um, people that associate with that particular um, and crime and then train came into being and then the library had a, came in a system where they used to give the public access to information, you know, not real time but almost real time access to information. And then I was with the archives unit when we set up the website where people could have access and follow the cases as it goes along. And I was supporting that. You know, I, I was taking care of the website and I was taking care of the database, the electronic database. So I saw how where I came from, where we everything is done paper. Everything is done manual to things being done through a computer-based system. And I saw the improvement in how the processing time, when you move from the manual base to the electronic record management system or quotes record system. And then I 
I was able to see the coach reporters, you know, real time because I was supporting them in the background where the, the technical aspect, if it crashed or something, I would come in and fix it. So I saw how the the, the, the introduction of the the court reporting system, the, the real time, how it improved the response time for all the parties to receive a copy of the transcript before, you know, and the end of the day or, or before the next day or bef and it's distributed. And then the, the judges also have a chance to give their comments before it's processed and, and taken as an official record. So I, I, I saw things moving from manual to electronic, and I know that technology is very vital if you want to improve the processing time and in terms of the performance of the courts too. Because you were here right at the beginning, or very mm. close to the beginning, you could talk about like what the ICTR was right at the beginning. Like you were talking about the sort of the computer systems paperwork, but like what did you see? What did it look like? What kind of shape was the ICTR in? Oh, when they started, there was a lot of <laughs> first things were confused, you know, because I can remember when I came and I came in, and they didn't even know that I was in, I was recruited, you know. So they put me in the stores. You know, I was basically <laughs> in the stores. So there was a lot of disorganization in the beginning, in the, in the initial stage. Even when they come down to the court processing, it was done manually. It was it started out manually. And then New York and, and, and decided that we need to put in place a proper electronic system so that real-time information can get to the, the various you know, parties in terms of the stakeholders on time. Because uh, and then uh, I realized filings and everything that was done manually through fax and, 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 and emails and things like that was a little bit slower than if you can get it out through the website or, or through another uh, electronic system, you know. So I've seen I've seen a, gra a vast improvement over time. And I'm saying that not only ICT, I think all the court systems that started uh, with the U.N., they had these challenges at the beginning where things were done and there was a lot of, the, the, and, and the UN was just being introduced to, you know, international criminal justice, you know, especially, and, and this, they had the ad hoc courts. And there was a lot of, you know, ups, challenges and obstacles, but over time, things became streamlined. That's why I noticed that the, the MIC is more prepared than the, the ICTR. Because the make is less learning from lesson learned from the ICTR. There's a lot of people that comes from the make from for ICTY, ICTR with vast experience and knowledge to in terms of implementing international criminal justice systems. You know. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.